Okay, in this lecture, we're going to talk a little bit about map projections. So it's a really good introduction to some of the basics of what you're going to see when you're working in a GIS system. So the, um, let me get my mouse I'm clicking in the right spot here. <laughs> so what is a map projection? So let's give that definition first. So it is a way to try to project a, a, a sphere onto a flat surface. Now, if you can imagine, you're going to take tin foil and you wrap it around a tennis ball. And if when you take that, that, that tin foil, are you able to cover the entire uh, tennis ball with the tin foil with no wrinkles or overlaps? And if that is the case, that you can, then you're a magician <laughs> because it is impossible. So what we need to do is find a way that we can show what the Earth is looks like and the shapes of the, that are on the Earth on a flat screen or a flat piece of paper. So when we do this, this ends up having different distortions. So we can have distance, so which means that the distance is not the same anywhere on the map. It, like for the same, like if I'm, I'm when I mean that, when I say that distance, I'm what I refer to is that it, I have one centimeter on the map, then it's going to be a different distance everywhere I go on that map. The direction is also a distortion, so we might find that north is not straight north. It could be curved, it could be um, at another angle, and we may not have perfect 90 degree angles at, with direction. The other one is scale. So the scale might change. Perhaps it's different in the y direction versus the x direction. And then area is another distortion that can happen. So the area would mean that the shape is changed in different sizes. So it's not necessarily the scale, but we can look at it and say, oh, that area looks smaller than what it does on the ground versus this other part. So normally you, can, you cannot get rid of all of these. There's no way to get rid of all of these. You can get rid of two, maybe three at the most, but there's always going to be one that is distorted. Oh, there's also con conformality, conformality, and that is also the, um, that's where like really the shape, the shape changes. So if I have a rectangle, it might become a parallelogram or something like that, uh, uh, as an example. So there's this YouTube video, I suggest you go watch it. I'm not going to turn it on in this in this video because you can access it later. Um, so here is some examples of what different distortions you can see. So here's Mercator, what it looks like as a Mercator, it's called a Mercator. So and I want you to really looking up in this region here when you compare it to the UTM. So with UTM, you can see how this is very different from this. The size is different. These are at the same scale across uh, as they're showing here, but you can really see how this region in here looks different. And then down here for the equal area, again, looking at how this is shaped versus down here, you can see how that shoreline curves rather than being more straight. And then we have WGS84, which is our latitude and longitude, and you can see how it really stretches out along the 49th parallel and how this again straightens out, but it's much more distorted up here than it is in this Mercator. So some examples to show you what they look like. The first one is an azimuthal projection, which is a flat plane. So you can imagine this is the disk or a piece of paper on top of the Earth. We usually use it at poles, but you can find this type of projection elsewhere as well. Cylindrical projection is the most common one across the Earth, for example, with UTM. So we can see that there's a cylinder that's wrapped around the Earth, and this is what it looks like with the distortions and how the, the lines change. And finally is the conical projection, which we use for long northern um, countries such as Russia or Canada. And so you can see that, again, the directions are not the same, and the scale changes much more down in the bottom here. So here's another one that you can go check out, another web page that you can go check out. You can play around with it a little bit to review the different projections and you can see how they it changes the shape of the Earth. So here is a trans uh, mercator. So a mercator is a cylinder and trying to create a grid on the Earth's surface. Transverse mercator means it's turned sideways. If it was at some weird angle, we would call that oblique. But a mercator is 
is generally the sphere or sphere, the um, the cylinder around a sphere. So that brings us into the universal transverse mercator, which is the UTM um, that we've already talked about in class. So this is just a review of that. So the Earth is split up into 66 degree zones. So that means if we have 60 zones and they are each six degrees wide, that multiply those together, we get 360 degrees. It starts at the international date line and it counts around going in a counterclockwise direction around the Earth's surface. So if you look for Calgary, where we're located, which is really around here-ish, and you're going to see that we, we actually cross between 11 and 12, so an 11 and 12 in our city. So we refer to those as that. That's the 11 that you're going to see, or the 12. Now, how did the coordinates come about with UTM? So we have six degrees across our zone, and then we can take a, a, a center line of that, and so we're going to have three degrees on either side of that. And this line here is set to 500,000 meters. The, the, and it's known as a false easting. So 500,000 meters, and then you can count away from that in either direction. Then the, um, so down here, we can see that the width of this at the equator is about 600,000 meters wide and it gets smaller as you go towards the, the poles. Our false northing, which is this blue line here, is the equator. So then the northing values is zero, and um, if you're in the northern hemisphere, so it starts at zero and counts up. If you're in the southern hemisphere, this line would be 10 million meters. And it's all in meters, so that's a, that's a key thing to know as well. So this is how we describe our location as we look at any point can be described by the distance east of the origin, and that's known as eastings. Then by definition, the central meridian is assigned. This, so this value here, anything along that line is going to be a 500 meter easting. And then anything greater, any eastern value greater than 500 meter, 500,000 meters indicates a point east of the central meridian. So that means that it increases as if we were reading, right? So we keep counting that way. And it gets smaller as we go west. So this is another example of what it looks like if we were to cut the Earth's surface. Like, so if we were to go down into the Earth's surface and look at it as if the zone is being placed in that third dimension, so we can see the surface of the Earth here, so we're looking flat at it. We have our zone limits on the side. There's three degrees on either side here. And then we have our central meridian, which is set at the 500,000 meters. We have something called a scale factor. So the scale factor at the central meridian is about 0 0.9996. And the reason for that is because here's the plane. That's the piece of paper that we're putting, trying to projected on. And that means that it's actually like cutting through the Earth's surface. So we have a scale factor that needs to be squished down onto the map, but then we have the sides here that need to be extended up and made bigger onto the map. So that's why the scale factor is greater than one on the sides, but less than one in the center. So you can think about it as trying to squish a piece of the, this, this, um, the sphere squish it down in the center and push it up on the sides in order to fit it onto this piece of paper. Where it actually connects, so you can see where the paper and the, um, and the Earth's surface, or the ellipsoid in this case, they connect, that is when the scale factor is one. So that means that there's no scale factor um, multiplication that needs to be done, and it's not distorted in that way. So here's our zones. So here you can see Alberta is in 11 and 12. Saskatchewan's got 12 and 13, et cetera. BC has, has some of zone 10 in it, which is, that doesn't look like that's correct. But that's BC, that's BC there we go. So that, sorry, the BC color is the green. So we see zone 10. And then we can also see B, BC also extends into zone 11. So there are three types of, th of transverse mercators that we use in Alberta. And so UTM is the common one um, that you will hear most of the time. 
If you work in the utility industry, you'll often use 10 TM, and that means that the zone itself is actually 10 degrees. So that means there's 36 zones in the world, not 60. So what this one does is it now sets a false easting along that central meridian at zero, and the false northing is along the equator at zero. So with the 10 TM, if you go to the west, you get negative numbers. When you go to the east, you get positive numbers. So as a review to UTM, it has six degree zones, so it's a little bit smaller. The false easting is 500 meters at the central meridian, and it is zero meters at the equator. Then we have 3 TM, which means we make them really small at three degrees wide. So that, with those, we take the central meridian of the three degree zone, and that false easting is zero, um, meet, or sorry, zero meters. And then the false northing at the equator is also zero meters. So this shows you how UTM and 3TM vary. So we can see our, our zone here, these little skinny zones on this diagram here. And we can also see how much wider they are in the UTM zone. So splitting them up into 3TM versus the UTM, much different. So that is a quick review of the different coordinate systems that you will be using in GIS. And I look forward to seeing you guys in class and reviewing this there.